Inspiring Philosophy fanboys love spamming me with IP videos, presumably because they want a response, so I guess I'll oblige. In the next few videos, I'll look at the video he did on why he thinks science shows abortion to be immoral. Also, Veniloid uploaded his response to this video just before I finished mine, so check his out as well. I'll put a link in the description. This is an attack on the pro-choice or pro-abortion crowd. The people who think it's okay for any woman to have an abortion just because they want to. I don't know who has an abortion just because they want to have an abortion. I've never heard of anyone wanting to have an abortion per se. Women who choose to have abortions usually have them because they don't want to be pregnant and or don't want to endure going through labor or a cesarean. That abortion is not murder and the act of an abortion is perfectly fine and doesn't harm anyone. This is one of the most unscientific beliefs out there today. It's unscientific because science does not and cannot demonstrate the moral significance or value of anything. How does one scientifically prove that killing anything is immoral? Science can show that a zygote is human, but how could it demonstrate that killing a human is immoral? The idea that killing a human being is wrong is not scientific. How would you empirically demonstrate the truth of such an idea? Which is why the pro-abortion crowd doesn't address the scientific arguments from the pro-life community, and instead relies on appeals to emotion and straw man arguments. We are constantly told that the pro-life community just wants to take away a woman's right to choose, and is a religiously motivated government power grab to remove the woman's right to her own body. I don't think the pro-life community just want those things, but I do think those things form part of the motivation of at least some pro-life advocates. Some pro-life Christians, Rick Santorum for example, are also opposed to vaccines for HPV. I strongly suspect that this is because they wish to preserve the threat of unwanted pregnancy and STIs as a disincentive to have extramarital or premarital sex. All the evidence demonstrates quite easily that human life begins at conception not at birth. According to everything science has revealed, this is just as much of a human as this is. Of course it is. I don't dispute that a fetus or even a zygote is human. What I dispute is the idea that a zygote is as morally significant as a self-aware entity. Being a human and being a person with all of the rights we regard as owed to a person are distinct things. I see a person as any entity capable of understanding its own existence. Not all humans can do this, and it may be the case that not all beings that can do this are human. I consider murder to be the non-consensual ending of the life for reasons other than defense, of an innocent entity which is, or at some point has been, aware of itself. Since a zygote has no such awareness, killing a zygote is not murder. There is not a scientific paper out there that says life begins later on or at birth. Probably not, but you will find plenty of papers which describe sperm cells as living. Life, per se, actually does not begin at conception. It began several billion years ago and has been a continuous process. However, you probably just worded this very clumsily. I'm sure that what you mean is not merely that life begins at conception, but rather that human life begins at conception. Though, as I said, I don't believe murder ought to be defined merely as the killing of a member of the human species. Later in the video, IP will claim that the distinction between humans and persons is ad hoc. He seems to think that this is an arbitrary distinction, but valuing something merely because it is a member of the human species seems far more arbitrary to me. I see no reason why killing a newly fertilized zygote is any morally different from killing the two gametes that formed it. Why is a merely taxonomical difference such as this morally significant? 